If you've been sewing any amount of time, you will have come across the term understitching. And if you're like me, when I first started, you might've looked at it, seen it on the pattern instructions there and just thought, what's understitching? I think I'll skip it. It's fine. <laughs> uh, we all do this as beginners. We skip sewing steps, mostly because we don't understand why we're doing them. So uh, in this video, I want to talk with you about what is understitching, how to do understitching, and show you the difference just that it makes so that you will hopefully not uh, be skipping these sort of steps anymore and you'll get much, much more professional finishes in your sewing. Welcome back my lovely ladies and gents. It is lovely to see your smiling faces here again. If we are actually just meeting for the first time, welcome. My name is Evelyn Wood and uh, I am the uh, creator of VintageSewingSchool.com and around here we are doing everything vintage sewing skills for modern day sewing to help you improve your sewing and get better garment sewing I should say. And one of the key things is garment construction and how to put things together and the proper ways to sew things. So last week's video, I actually, uh, this one, I talked about the term understitching. Uh, so in this video, I went through the sort of points on this particular garment that were not sewn very well and things that I thought could be improved and that so showed you what you could do at home. And one of the things was understitching. And I was surprised by the amount of people that just come up and asked, what is understitching? Yeah, I know. Um, I remember not knowing any of these things too. And I used to skip them all the time and you would get results that just don't look very good. So let's talk about uh, understitching, how to do it. I'm going to show you a few examples, why, uh, what it looks like with and without so you can really decide for yourself because I think that is the most key thing when you understand what you're doing you then don't skip these crucial steps that will really improve your sewing. And this is the one of the key ways you can get really nice crisp finishes is by understitching. So first of all, what is understitching? So understitching is a stitch that you do along the uh, finishes where two bits of fabric have been sewn together and they are turned through, you would understitch uh, one side of those. So you, this is not top stitching. So top stitching you actually see from the, or um, edge stitching as well, you see from the top of the garment. So they could be top stitching or edge stitching. Uh, that is what you see on the top of the garment. And it usually would go through all of the layers there. Under stitching is you do not see it from the top layer and you only see the stitching on the underside, hence the under stitching. That is what our under stitch is. Why do we use it? So we use it to actually hold down. It's usually used on areas like necklines um, uh, and facings, front um, openings, anywhere where there is facings or lining or something like I said before where two layers of fabric are sewn and then they are turned out and then you would need to sort of secure it with either top stitching, edge stitching or under stitching. Under stitching is usually my preferred way because it gives a nice crisp clean finish on the top and so it actually helps roll under that um, facing so the facing and the lining stays on the underside and the top side stays really nice and crisp and sharp and then you don't have those um, linings rolling out just like what was happening on the pink jacket. As you can see it makes quite a difference and this is a really easy fix to do on this and one that you can definitely do yourself and makes a big difference to how that uh, looks really nice and crisp and sharp now. So just by doing that understitching alone made that front uh, lapel area just look so neat and crisp and sharp just by understitching. It is incredible. So I guess the big question is how do we actually do this? Well, um, let me show you. First of all, you need you will sew your seam as you normally would. So remember, two pieces of fabric that have been folded out. I'm going to show you on the straight piece because it is way easier, of course. So this is where we do the understitching. So this is my right side of my fabric. This red is the lining that I'm using, for example. So what we want to do is actually stitch only on the lining 
and the seam allowance. And we want our top layer of fabric to remain only like no stitching visible on here. So all of your seam allowance you pull towards and underneath, it sits underneath the lining, all of it, all layers. And then what we want to do, it helps to actually, at very least, finger press. Uh, if you're just new, an actual press is what you'll need to make this a lot easier because you really need to actually pull out that seam as you're doing it because if it's lapped over, it will look homemade and not very nice at all. So make sure it is perfectly pulled out. And then we just want to basically edge stitch along the lining as close as we can, catching the, the seam allowance in underneath the entire way. So I usually just go ahead and uh, sew, but I know a lot of new sewers actually find a little bit more success with using a zipper foot. So why would this help? Basically, it just gives you a guide and you can use the edge of the foot to help guide you in a straight line along that edge because it can be tricky when you first uh, start. Always making sure that you're pulling these two seams out and you're always checking that your seam allowance is actually towards the lining and it's caught onto the lining side. Nothing should be on our outer fabric at all when we're doing this. beautiful. So you always keep your stitching about two millimeters only away from the actual edge. That way when you fold it out like this, look at this, it just naturally wants to hide this facing, this lining, and our outer fabric, we don't have any lining poking through. We haven't even pressed it yet. Look how good that looks. Now, obviously sewing on a straight line is quite easy and I recommend that's how you practice. Sewing on curves, which is what you're usually doing, say for example, this is a, uh, you know, a little mini neckline here, uh, is a bit more difficult uh, to actually sew to make sure you get in all of the lining caught underneath and it's actually even more important to do it on these areas. So let me show you an example here on these two. And these are cotton, so these press up really nice and neat and I've clipped the curves and everything and made it really, really well. So even on this example, you can see here, I have, uh, this is unpressed, unfinger pressed. This is straight from the machine. I've literally just turned it over and you can see the difference here on uh, the one that has under stitching and the one that doesn't. So the one with understitching, you can see it naturally just wants to roll over and hide that red lining underneath. It just makes it so easy. And you can imagine then uh, when you come to the iron, just even finger pressing this down after finger pressing, which you would do first, makes it so easy. It just naturally wants to fall into that shape for you in a nice, smooth, crisp line and curl under really neatly. Where the, with no understitching, it's really hard. You really have to manipulate and uh, you know uh, twirl, twist that um, fabric in your fingers to really push out the seam and to make it sit right. It's a lot of effort. And then of course, pressing is the final key. It makes it really easy to press because being understitched, it just naturally rolls into position. Whereas when it's not, um, and a lot of people don't, uh, because we're skipping steps, probably a beginner, I used to do this. You just smoosh down the iron, right? And you just kind of iron it as is. You don't even know that you're sort of supposed to actually make the seam sit nice and have the lining sit down underneath on the underside. You just don't know these things. But so by doing the understitching, it just does it for you. Uh, it really does all the hard work. If this kind of thing is really eye-opening for you, I uh, definitely would welcome you to come have a look at VintageSewingSchool.com because we focus really on learning the skills that you need like this that give you really professional looking garments. When you understand what you're doing, you then can create clothing, not just make stuff and not understand it, but really create when you actually understand what you're doing. So come and uh, visit us at vintagesewingschool.com. So I am absolutely sure now that you will never ever consider skipping the step of understitching again. And when you see this written in a pattern, that is what it means. When you hear me or other people in tutorials and they just say, understitch, you know what you're supposed to do on that seam. And you know now, if you skip the step, how much harder it's going to be for you. Because when you do that understitching, 
it just naturally wants to fold over and it makes everything else easier on top. I say, you know, sewing is 70% preparation and uh, doing the understitching is like preparing it for ironing. It makes it so much easier when you don't skip all these steps along the way. So do like this video if you like it and let me know below, are you an understitcher or did you try and skip this step a lot and maybe now have seen the light? I would love to hear it. Uh, and do share your stories of maybe how you learned to understitch the hard way as a lot of us do. Um, in the process. I'd love to read all your comments below because there is always a wealth of information for all of us to learn from. So thank you very much for watching and until next time, bye!